why one degree makes a difference. Oh, talking about relative humidity. Ah, yes. So why does one degree make a difference when we talk about relative humidity? So your humidity, the amount of moisture that's in the air, at a given time, there is no moisture in this air. There's always moisture in the air. It's a common thing that people mm. say there's no moisture in the air. If the moisture content was very, very low, you would struggle to breathe. <laughs> They're like in the middle of Gobi <sighs> Desert. I'm not struggling to breathe. So there is moisture in air. Okay. Just because we can't see it does not mean there is none in the room. Ah, okay. So why does one degree make a difference then? So with your humidity levels, what you'll have is a set percentage of moisture. If we vary the actual temperature, so does the percentage vary. My ah. self-esteem colleague here will turn into a seesaw. For seesaw. Me. Seesaw. Seesaw. Okay. Like that. I like that. Uh, do me the way. That'll do. There we go. This so this, this, uh, this can be a nice balanced seesaw, this, for us. So if we've got an average sort of room, 20 degrees, okay, could be middle of the day, humidity levels, bang on perfect, where we want, 50%. Oh. Great. But obviously on an evening, temperature drops. Now oh. what will happen is with the seesaw effect, every one degree the temperature drops, the humidity one. will rise by approximately 5%. There is a slight variation there, but for easy maths, we'll use 5% today. Okay. So it could be 20 degrees in your living room, 50%, uh -huh. lovely. On an evening, cools down, 19, 18, 17, what's happening here? 16, humidity levels are rising quite Don't significantly. Don't go any lower. Why not? It's table in a way. Oh, okay. So with humidity levels, we need to be aware that they are linked to temperature. So, so most people on an evening will have their heating on through the middle of the night. It does get cooler in the middle of the night, so humidity levels will raise quite significantly. So this is where we need to work with these. What happens if my temperature goes higher? So if we raise the temperature within the room, all of a sudden what you'll find the sea cell will go the other way. So for the given amount of moisture in the air, the actual percentage is now lowering. So the percentage of the humidity level has now dropped. So if we go back to 20, just for the people at home. Just seeing how long I could keep it there for, weren't you? Uh, well, I was a bit, really. I'm trying to drag Thank it, but much, yeah. that's quite all right. See how far you could go before he disappeared. 20 degrees, 50%. Let's go 21 degrees. Well done. So that's now 45%. I have to think about that then. As a rough guide. 22 degrees is now 40%. And that is with the moisture within the room. Okay, and put it back there. Yes. What happens now if I have a really steamy hot bath? Right. With my candles and my bubbles. Oh, the guys are weird. Okay, so we're in the bathroom. <sighs> we're going to be forcing a lot of moisture into the air because the shower is on. So as you can imagine, the moisture content will go up. But because we're raising the actual temperature in the room as well with the hot water as well, you'd find your temperature goes up as well. But we've still got an excessive amount of moisture. Normally, temperature may go up a couple of degrees within the bathroom. Unless you've got no heating on in your property, it may go up an awful lot more. And if you're not but working you that in a controlled a manner, lot of moisture within some that of that may itself. escape to other parts of the property, known as moisture migration. Moisture migration. Yeah, I'm not doing that with my hands. It's well, migrating nowhere. A couple of little sort of tips there for you with humidity levels. Just put them away now. You can. Do you know, yeah. I never felt a thing. Then uh, I'm fine. Yes. I'll cry later. I can see the tears. Yes. yes. So, yes. if you tears like. That's all, folks. I'm not sure we need to go there yet. Oh, do you not want to go there? I don't want to go there yet. Okay. No, I don't want to go there yet. I want to give a better example of that. Oh, fair enough. It's called the Coke can effect. Ah. Yeah. Or. We could even just call it the can effect because some people aren't a privileged to Coke. No. They might like a tango. Yes. Or a monster. Or a nice cold beer. Oh, a tinny. Yeah. Tinny. In yes. the summer. Always remember the Australian adverts. 
Get a tinny out the fridge, mate. Yeah. They're the ones, won't go into them. No. Nope. Get a can, nice cold can or bottle, whatever your preference is. Out the fridge in the middle of summer. Yeah. You go outside, you sit down next to the barber, you put the can down or the bottle, and what happens to it? It gets warm. It gets warm? Yeah. yeah. But what happens to it before it gets warm? Oh, you get water droplets exactly. around it. Yeah. Like we've got on there, you end up with a lot of water droplets on it. Yes. Yeah. That Why is, is that? That is because of the temperature difference in the can, because you've taken out of a fridge which is really cold. Gotcha. You put it in a warm environment, there's moisture in the air. There is. That moisture is attracted to the can. Yes. Because of the temperature difference, it condensates up on the can. Ah. And that's all it's doing. That moisture is hitting what we call dew point. Oh. It's basically becoming saturated and becomes water. Oh. So you just have to drink it really fast. I think we can manage that. Yeah. Okay. So now we can go to, if you like, subscribe, watch more, learn more. We'll see, see you soon. soon.